Good afternoon. I'm Miranda Khan. We begin with news on today with the very latest uh, weather stories. Hurricane Agatha now becoming one of the strongest known hurricanes to hit North America. Fragments of Agatha will most likely cross the mountains into the extreme southern Gulf Coast of Mexico. It appears that the general steering flow will push it towards Florida more specifically central and south florida but the moisture will likely impact the entire southern peninsula that's how massive this thing is right now meanwhile rounds of intense thunderstorms some packing strong tornadoes will pose a significant risk of lives and property across portions of the northern and central plains for a closer look at your forecast we want to send it over to weather nations patrick crawford Well, we're tracking severe weather at Weather Nation across a good portion of the North Central and Central United States, anywhere from the Great Lakes into Michigan, as well as Wisconsin, all the way down through the plains of Western Texas. There's going to be areas of rotation, so we've got not only the damaging wind threat, but also the possibility for some tornadoes, especially into areas of Central and Northern Illinois and through the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle, or more the Texas Panhandle into Western Oklahoma, but that's where we could see some rotating thunderstorms trying to drop down a tornado. So look at the intensity of these storms as we look into the afternoon. Our forecast is on it. It's really picking up on the intensity that we're tracking and it's also lining up with where we have the severe outlook today from the Storm Prediction Center. So things are going to be coming together for that severe uh, thunderstorm threat anywhere from Michigan all the way down into Texas and Oklahoma where we could also have some large hail. That's the latest here. Back to you. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. Speaking of weather, heavy rain appears to be dampening production for wheat here in the U.S. with farmers in North Dakota specifically expected to plant, well, their smallest amount on record this year. Joining us live now to discuss more stories affecting your money is CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Miranda. So, Melissa, the U.S. is the fourth largest wheat exporter in the world, given the global food crisis and Russia's war on Ukraine that curbed wheat exports. The world can't really afford to lose additional supplies of wheat. So how could this impact Americans here at home, given the fact that farmers are already struggling with the rising cost of fertilizer? Well, it's definitely going to impact it. Again, some of these things are out of the farmer's control. Weather is one of them. But we've had supply chain issues going back since the beginning of COVID now, two and a half years. This is part of the reason why you're seeing high inflation. Costs of things are going to continue to rise. And in fact, they're going to rise before even the crop comes out, even the plantings in the fall, because in anticipation that there's going to be supply chain issues. Remember, when things start to get less where you have less product, then the cost of the product that you do have to put out there goes up. So again, there's high demand and they're having issues. Part of it has to do with the weather situation. And again, supply chain issues going back for the last two and a half years. People really, I think, are paying a lot more than the statistics says. They're saying that inflation is at 8%. The Fed's saying they can get inflation down to 2% by the end of the year. I still don't think that's anywhere going to happen. I also don't think that the 8% number is even accurate. And I'm saying that as someone that goes out at shops and goes to the grocery store, and I see the cost of some products that are actually doubled. So when you say you don't believe it's accurate, do you are you suggesting that maybe the Fed, maybe the Biden administration isn't being uh, transparent, if you will, with the American people? But the problem is they average the number. So say you take something like, I don't know, strawberries, maybe those have doubled in price. Then you take another product, maybe it's frozen peas or something that's gone up like 1%. So they average it. So what I'm saying is you've got to look at the staples, the things that people are buying the most. Those are the things that have gone up a lot. Then you also have to look at something again like gas. One of the reasons yeah. that products have gone up and that's effective farmers too is diesel, oil, fuel, everything. All the things that they order, even the farmers to get, all of the things that they need for the plantings. Again, how are they getting those supplies from trucks, which is which high gas prices? How are you getting all the things you could buy at the grocery store? Again, they get there on a truck. So it's they average the price, not that they're being dishonest, but the problem is the way that they make those calculations in my opinion, really isn't accurate because it's the staples, the things that we buy and spend money on a lot. And obviously gas is one of them in the car and certain food items, chicken, eggs, bread, things right. like that, dairy products that have gone up so much more than they're, than they're accounting for when they say an 8% inflation number. 
And I want to get to some of that, but real quick update for our viewers. Speaking of Ukraine, Russia has now seized half of the eastern uh, of an eastern Ukrainian city there, nearly 13,000 civilians seeking shelter in what was once home to 100,000. EU now agreeing to block more than two-thirds of Russian oil imports and 90 percent by the end of the year. Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, oil having a big impact, rising to more than $120 per barrel. But the president is expected to discuss the state of the U.S. and global economy, especially inflation, as you just mentioned, with the Federal Reserve Chair, Jerome Powell, today, saying that the goal is to transition from a, quote, historic economic recovery to a stable, steady growth that works for working families. What does that mean? I don't think there's going to be any significant outcome from that meeting today. Pretty much at the end of the day, the Biden administration's policies on energy have affected oil prices a lot. Chev that's one of the stocks I think you could actually look at going long, our oil stock. Chevron today made a brand new all-time high over 180, almost got to 181. Again, if you're someone that's invested in the market, the prices and this inflation, the scare of a recession has affected a lot of stocks, but not oil stocks. So they have been good longs. As far as the Fed, they've been wrong in the decisions that they've made in the last two years. They have they halted and waited too long to raise rates. Now they want to raise them too fast this year. I think the Biden administration is going to allow Jerome Powell to make whatever decisions he wants to make, right or wrong. And I think the biggest issue is not just raising rates. That's not going to prevent or help stave off a recession or stop the inflation. The problem is, again, we have still too many jobs available not filled. We have supply chain issues. And again, we have things that cost way too much money because of what's going on around in the world. Ukraine and Russia, the war that's going over there is one of the problems. And whether they raise rates, that isn't going to stop those problems. Yeah, well, and another topic, and unfortunately we're tight on time, not being discussed um, by a lot of mainstream media outlets are some of these suspicious fires happening at food processing plants here in the U.S. Uh, there was a barn that has tens of thousands of chickens uh, in Minnesota that was set aflame uh, late Saturday night. Before this one, there was 25 others, a small plane crashing into a General Mills food facility in Georgia. We're going to continue to monitor that because a lot of people that's kind of raising some red flags. Uh, Melissa Armo, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. So much to discuss, so little time. Uh, coming up, though, an update on the Uvalde, Texas mass shooting, what people are honing in on when we return. We'll be right back.